In this part 2 video of the Dream Machine, we are going to see me do a bit of cleanup, unboxing of the Dream Machine, and then assembly of a new cabinet I got for my equipment. Uh, then we are going to take a deep dive into the setup of the Dream Machine and how I'm using it at the moment. The packaging and the opening of the box is very Apple-like. You get the same high quality kind of vibes from this product. The Dream Machine, it feels very premium in your hand. The information provided is very minimalistic. You get a card with a QR code on to download the Unify app so you can get started right away. The power cord is also very soft to touch and feels amazing, very high quality. So as you can see I have a lot of mess I wanted to clean up before setting up this device. For the cleanup I will show you the cabinet I got from IKEA. The cabinet cost around uh, 850 Swedish crown and as you can see I've purchased it in the white color and the weight of the box was around 20 kilos. It was quite easy to assemble the cabinet, it took around 30 minutes, a bit extra time was wasted on removing the back plates as I didn't want to drill holes for the cables. So here you can see my equipment moved in. My computer used as a server can be seen on the left. This station I use for storage and backup is on the right and at the bottom I have a UPS which can run for a few minutes in case of a very short power failure. And in the back you can see I've hooked up two Unify Flex mini switches. And here on the top is the Dream Machine providing internet and security to the whole apartment. So let's dive into the Dream Machine. Um, just for the information I'm using the beta version of the firmware for the Dream Machine, uh, version 1.8. Let's connect. So I can see the Dream Machine is uh, telling me that everything uh, looks great. Uh, I have a score of 98%, so this can go up or down depending on the connectivity of your devices. So if you have uh, like a phone uh, and you are far away from the device, the, the connection to the phone, it won't be so good. And this can cause this percentage to fall. Um, I have also set up a speed test uh, which runs uh, within a given interval so I can keep a track if uh, I'm getting the internet speed I'm paying for. Uh, down here you can see the retry rate uh, so if it's uh, losing a lot of packages uh, so this can be uh, seen here. So this uh, looks um, alright. Uh, no need to worry about this. Um, so here you can see there are some anomalies, so like uh, ping for this device is high uh, and uh, signal strength was low at this time. And also I can configure the themes, so there is a, a light one and the dark one and here you can see the channels uh, the device is using for the wi-fi 
So let's uh, dive in. Let's see some statistics. So I have enabled the deep packet inspection. So this gives me this um, all of this information of uh, what's happening on the network. I can see Facebook, LinkedIn. I have uh, a lot of call to Google API. Uh, yes, also to Amazon, and uh, I can also see which users are using uh, all of the bandwidth. So my dev server is using quite a lot, and also this station, which is doing some backups. Yes. Um, yeah, let's go to the map and see how the network is uh, looking at the moment. So I have the dream machine here, um, so all of these devices are connected uh, directly to the dream machine. And then there is the first switch, so the first switch it, uh, has the uh, development servers and also I'm uh, hooked into the switch from my office so that's why my MacBook can be seen connected to the switch and then the second switch is uh, connected to the first one and on the second switch I have the 4G failover and then I have the Philips Hue uh, device also connected to the second switch. Uh, so this view gives you an overview of the devices you have connected and you can also see the experience for the dream machine here. And on the next one we can see all of the clients and how happy they are. So everything looks good. And then this Philips Hue, I have limited uh, connectivity of it as uh, I've put it in uh, a VLAN. So it can't communicate with uh, the rest of my network, so I'm just testing out how the VLANs they perform on this device. And yeah, as I've mentioned in the part one video, that I want to split my network up in three parts. So one for the servers I have, and then one for all of my home devices, and then one for the IoT devices. So the Philips Hue is currently on the IoT VLAN. This insight is again just uh, telling the usage and uh, when the devices was last seen and what kind of devices they are. So yeah, this one is a vacuum cleaner, not a security camera. Um, let's get to the next uh, menu item, which is the threat management. Okay, so you can see I have enabled the uh, IPS and also I've blocked uh, all, a lot of countries here. Uh, there is a limitation on how many countries you can block. So I wanted to block a few more, but that's not possible. Um, so in this traffic log you can see all of the violations that are happening and some attacks as well so we can see here i'm getting some attacks from the united states and that is my website hosting which they are attacking a lot of attacks are coming from the united states a few from china and some other countries as well but uh, the main mainly it's from the united states so endpoint scan it shows you on the ip addresses uh, 
what kind of devices or what they are running on these devices. And then there is this honeypot I have set up. So honeypot is an IP address you can set up. Uh, so there, is, there isn't anything on the IP address, but whenever something tries to scan your network or, or ping that address, uh, you'll be able to see here. So I can see there are these two devices or two IP addresses that try to uh, uh, connect to the port 80 on the IP address I have uh, set the honeypot on. So in the events you can see all of the events uh, which are being triggered on the network. So like devices connecting, disconnecting or uh, someone trying to use some exploits. Okay, so you can see I have one network set up. Um, so I'm going to create a few more. So there will be one for the IoT and one for my ARM devices. Uh, yeah, just so in the Wi-Fi schedules, you can set a schedule for when to block the internet and uh, enable it. There is this uh, AI feature I have enabled and it seems to be doing well. It's currently in beta, so it may not work for all. But uh, what this does is, is that uh, daily at uh, 4 o'clock a.m. It will scan the network and see which channel there is uh, less interference on and then it will change to those channels. So like here we can see that it uh, changed to the channel 1 and the experience dropped. So now we are back on the channel 11. So here you can see that I have specified my download speeds and I have also told it to run the speed test every 12th hour and we can see the results in statistics I think and uh, the speed test stats. So here we can see some stats. I don't think this is very reliable because uh, like uh, this uh, yeah I know that this isn't true because if I lost the internet connection then I would get some alerts that my websites wasn't working or they were offline so I don't think it can connect to a server all the time to do the speed test Let's get back. So on the WAN networks we have the two. So this is the dream machine and this is the 40 failover I have set up. And then we have my local LAN network and here I have created another network called IoT and you can see it is on the VLAN 50. So I will just show you how to set this up. So it's on the corporate. Uh, so you can specify the purpose for the networks. So I have just specified the corporate. Uh, the ID is 50 and then I've given it uh, gateway, IP and subnet and uh, DHCP range. And then I think everything else is default and enabled. Uh, I've enabled this as well. Okay, so the next one is hotspot. Um, I've not used this feature, so I'm just going to skip it. But um, you can basically allow guests to connect your network without uh, being able to access your network. So you can set up some rules and customize the login experience. 
And then we come down to the internet security. So you can see a lot of this is in uh, beta and alpha. So it may not work for all. And it may not be that effective. So yeah, but you can use it if uh, you want to try it out. So I've enabled uh, everything for the intrusion prevention system. And then the UIP filtering I've enabled as well for traffic both ways. And I have uh, filtered a lot of countries out. And then I have a content filtering for adult sites. Deep packet inspection is on. So that is what you saw in the beginning that I could see what was going on on the network. And then we have this uh, network scanner. So here is my honeypot. So you can see it set up on my main LAN network. And then at last here we have the firewall. So I have made some custom rules in this firewall for the VLANs. Let's find them. Okay, so here you can see one of the rules that on the LAN out. So from my LAN network to IoT, I have it on accept. So I want to be able to connect to the Philips U from my iPhone. Uh, when I'm home, so that is what this rule is going to allow me to do. So if I try to access it from the LAN network, then I will get access, but from IoT to LAN is blocked, and that rule you can see down here. So if, at, if there goes some traffic from the IoT to the LAN, it will be dropped. So the next section is uh, VPN. So I have set up a VPN to connect to my network and so I can work on uh, the virtual machines I have running. And then I have uh, some port forwarding set up for my uh, web server. And then, yeah, we are going to skip all of the rest from this menu. And I have not configured anything here as well. Yeah, so that's the setup at the moment I'm uh, running on. During this speed test I was connected to the Dream Machine from a remote location and you can see the performance of the VPN connection here. 